When I was a kid, most summers we'd drive across Europe to Hungary to spend our vacation there with my family. It took a couple of days, and as I stared out of the window, I noticed that the nearer we got to the Iron Curtain, and especially once we were inside communist Hungary, I noticed more cars with this on the back. DDR. It stood for Deutsche Demokratische Republik, German Democratic Republic. This was before German unification. There were two Germanys, but the German Democratic Republic wasn't the name of West Germany that actually was a democracy. It was what the communist dictators in East Germany called their one-party state. Now, why would they do that, I asked my parents. We didn't use the word gaslighting back then, but of course that's what it was. And here I am again on this show, a proud immigrant, a new American citizen, my parents having left communist Hungary for England, comparing what's going on here in America with the kind of behavior we saw in communist regimes. Because gaslighting over democracy wasn't just something the East Germans did. It's what we got from Biden and the gang this week as they shamelessly staged their second summit for democracy, blathering on about stopping democratic backsliding when it's happening right here under our noses. Say the wrong thing online, they'll silence and censor you. Try and challenge the way they run your kid's school. They'll set the FBI on you. Make a meme about Hillary Clinton. They'll prosecute you. Which is pretty much how it works in Xi Jinping's China. Try calling him Winnie the Pooh and see what happens to you. In China, there is no political opposition. But we're seeing democratic backsliding in countries where political opposition used to be tolerated. Like in India this week, the ruling party there barred the opposition leader from standing in the next election. And what does that remind you of? We'll get to the latest legal moves in the Trump indictment in a minute. But let's just enjoy for a moment the laughable spectacle of the establishment trying to claim that this is not political. The New York Times editorial board, quote, while some legal experts have questioned the theory behind Mr. Bragg's case, there is no basis for the accusation that it is politically motivated. How many of those rolling on the floor laughing emojis do we need for that one? What about these people? Alvin is not manipulated by anybody and motivated by politics. Congressman Jim Jordan, an outspoken Trump supporter and chair of the House Weaponization Committee, sent a uh, New York DA Alvin Bragg a letter asking him to testify about his, quote, decision to pursue such a politically oh, motivated prosecution. On. That's hard. Get, a, get, a, get, a, get out of third grade. That's not even <laughs> smart. Yeah. It's just, that's uh, it's not even, like, it's like a, duh. I mean, come on, who, who are these guys? I don't know. Who are these guys? It's not, it's not a pro among them. Yeah, who are these guys trying to suggest that this might be politically motiv motivated? I don't know. People like that well-known ultra MAGA Trump diehard, uh, Mr. Establishment, Fareed Zakaria of CNN. The prosecutor, Alvin Bragg, is an elected district attorney who ran a campaign for that office boasting that he had helped sue Donald Trump over a hundred times. Even so, once elected and after looking over the evidence, he is reported to have put the case on the back burner, which triggered a storm of criticism from his Democratic base. He then reversed course and decided to pursue the case on a new basis. This case has the feel of zealous prosecutors minutely examining all possibilities to find some violation of the law. This upends the notion in Anglo-Saxon law that you first have a crime and then you search for the criminal rather than first looking at the person and investigating. Exactly. Of course it's political. Everyone except the most rabid, cultist, Trump-hating, hyper-partisan can see that. Unfortunately, these days, most of the media are, in fact, rabid, cultist, Trump-hating, hyper-partisans. Let's just make a couple of things clear. Of course, no one is above the law. But as we said last week, no one is below it either. Democratic Senator Joe Manchin made this exact point this morning. No one's above the law, Dana, but no one should be targeted by the law, especially through the, proce uh, through the political process. If Trump or any other former president has committed a crime, yeah, they should be prosecuted. But as Joe Manchin said, they should not be targeted, let alone when they're actually running for office. The fact that this 
targeted political abuse of the justice system is being praised by Democrats means we'll likely see more of it. As Ankush Kardori, a former federal prosecutor, argued in today's New York Times, quote, every local prosecutor in the country will now feel that he or she has free reign to criminally investigate and prosecute presidents after they leave office. Perhaps, as we speak, there's an ambitious prosecutor in Little Rock, Arkansas, who's thinking, well, if we're ignoring the statute of limitations now, and if hush money paid in political campaigns is such a serious crime, let's indict Bill and Hillary Clinton, who paid far more money to far more women over far more serious allegations than Trump has ever been accused of. Or maybe there are DAs in the hometowns of those 13 service members killed in Kabul as the direct consequence of Joe Biden's pig-headed insistence on a sudden and total withdrawal from Afghanistan, directly countermanding the advice of military leaders. Those young men and women from Ohio, Tennessee, Utah, Nebraska, Indiana, Texas, Missouri, Wyoming, plenty of Republican prosecutors in those states. Who knows? Maybe there's an involuntary manslaughter charge heading Biden's way when he finally leaves office. This is the world they've ushered in. These deranged, hyper-partisan Democrats with their divisive Get Trump circus. This mindless distraction from the serious issues we face. Not least, new evidence that we've completely lost our way as a country. This headline in Axios says it all, quote, rot of nation's core values quantified by single poll. And here is that poll, Wall Street Journal, NORC, a total collapse in support for the values that have defined America for generations, patriotism, faith, family. Since 1998, the number of Americans who view patriotism as important has dropped from 70% to 38%. The importance of religion, down from 62% to 39%. Having children, drop from 59% to 30%. Community involvement, down from 47% to 27%. The only area that Americans see as more important than it was 25 years ago, having money. In other words, greed. This is an absolute catastrophe for our nation. The foundations of American society are collapsing. But now, thanks to the ludicrous antics of a hyper-partisan New York DA. The country will be consumed by a media circus about a porn star. This is truly last days of Rome level decadence. Biden promised unity, told us he'd end the uncivil war, but instead he's recklessly exploiting America's fault lines for partisan advantage. It's become almost pathological. The way they do the exact thing they accuse everyone else of. When the Democrats lecture us about our democracy, they mean power for them. When they say the rule of law, they mean the rule of Democrats. The leaders of this party have become consumed by hate and ideological extremism. They've politicized the justice system and the FBI. They've used the government to censor opposition. They are now the anti-democracy party. Of course, Republicans can and must fight back, and they must do it proudly and peacefully. But that's not enough. That won't cut out the cancer of hate and extremism on the left. After what we've seen this week, now is the time for reasonable, moderate Democrats to leave their party. That is the next revolution we need. Tell us what you think on the new free Twitter at NextRevFNC and at Steve Hilton X, and share this message when we post it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.